Shivers The Enchanted Attic by M. D. Spencer Chapter 5 Casey climbed the ladder first. Nicole stayed on the floor giving instructions. Pull on that book, she said. No, that thick one over there. Casey pulled. Nothing happened. She pulled harder. Still nothing. No matter how hard she pulled, the bookcase would not swing open. Nicole, she said, you lied just to get me to come back in the house. I did not, Nicole said angrily. From the tone of her voice, Casey knew she meant it. Casey could be very determined when she wanted to be. Now was one of those times. A look of total concentration took over her face. She grabbed the book with both hands, leaned back as far as she could, and yanked. Stop! Nicole hissed as loud as she could without attracting her parents' attention. If the wall comes open, you'll fall backward off the ladder, hit your head, and my whole day will be ruined. What are you, stupid? This remark made Casey mad. Her eyebrows came down over her eyes. Her bottom lip stuck out. Even up on the ladder, she tried to hunch her shoulders and cross her arms. She got so involved in acting mad, she let go of the ladder and almost fell off. She stomped down the ladder and announced she was going to tell their mother. But she only walked three steps away. And there she stood with her back to Nicole and her arms crossed. It was obvious she was mad, but it was equally obvious she didn't really want to go tell their mother and ruin their secret. She had been excited when Nicole told her about the passageway. She had been more excited still about the idea of keeping it as their secret place. Before coming into the house, the two girls had retrieved the flashlight from the glove compartment of the car. They shut the car door as quietly as they could. It didn't close all the way. The dome light was still on inside the car, and Nicole got the door shut all the way by whacking it with her butt. They wanted to get into the study without attracting their parents' attention, so they would be free to explore the secret passageway. They crept stealthily across the yard. Nicole, by far the taller, peered in through a window. Their mother was still cleaning the kitchen. Going in that way certainly wouldn't work. Nicole signaled that they should go around the back of the house. She bent over at the waist so she wouldn't be seen through the windows. Casey bent over too, even though there was no need. She wouldn't be seen through the windows even if she walked on stilts, Nicole thought. There was a door on the far side of the house. Nicole hoped it would get them into the house near the other end of the study. There was no way of knowing, however. The door had no windows, and no one in the family had used that door yet, which meant that probably no one had used it in the last 20 years, or however long it was that the house was unoccupied. Gently, quietly, Nicole turned the knob. The door wouldn't open. It was rusted shut or something. Casey put her shoulder against it and pushed. The door was stuck fast. Nicole put her shoulder against it and pushed. The door groaned a little under her weight, but would not give. Then both girls put their shoulders against the door, grit their teeth, and on the count of three, pushed with all their might. And the door flew open, and the two of them flew into the house and landed in a heap. From under the floor came a loud voice. What the heck's going on up there? It was their father, still clanking around in the basement, trying to figure out how to work the heat or the water or whatever. Uh, nothing, Daddy. The cold called out. The girls found themselves in the middle of what looked like a coat room. 
An ancient coat rack stood in the corner. On one of its metal arms hung an old faded army hat. Moths had eaten holes in the cloth. As they looked, the hat disintegrated, falling off the rack and fluttering to the ground. Casey gasped and turned white. <gasps> she grabbed Nicole's arm. At first, Nicole said nothing. She simply stared at the hat, now nothing more than dusty bits of cloth in a pile on the floor. Finally, she caught her breath. Vibrations, she said slowly. I think it was a very old hat and was just ready to fall apart. When we burst in through the door, that was all it needed. That answer seemed to satisfy Casey. I like this house, she said. Nicole rolled her eyes. This house, roller coasters. Casey liked everything dangerous and unsettling and stupid, including, luckily, dark passageways. The girls scrambled to their feet and looked around. Nicole pointed through an open doorway. There was the study with its wall-to-floor bookcases. Casting a last glance at the tattered hat on the floor, the girls had headed into the study, with Casey leaving muddy footprints all the way. But now Casey was mad. Arms crossed, back hunched, eyebrows scrunched down over her eyes, refusing to talk to Nicole. Nicole walked over to her. She apologized for calling her stupid and promised to lend her one of her Barbies if she would get over being mad. An apology was all Casey needed. That and a bribe. She brightened up at once. Okay, she said, but I have to have the Barbie for a whole hour. Deal. Nicole said. Pinky promise. Now Nicole climbed the ladder to see if she could get the wall to swing open, since Casey had not been strong enough. She tugged on the book. Nothing happened. She began to wonder if she had imagined the secret door. Was she confusing fiction with reality? Boy, she really was reading too much. Maybe she had come in, taken a great book off the shelf, and gotten so involved she thought it was real. No, that couldn't be so. Could it? She grabbed the book firmly and pulled harder. Nothing. She pulled harder still, grunting with effort as she yanked. Slowly, with a heavy creaking noise, the top of the bookshelf swung open. Nicole climbed down the ladder. Your turn, she said. Casey climbed up. Nicole handed her up the flashlight. Casey shined it into the passageway. Cool, she said. This is really neat. Wait till you see what's in here.